Hey Glam Fam, Linwood here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do some feed-in braids on this mannequin right here. Before we get started, I just want to let you guys know everything that you'll need is listed in the description box down below. So if you're wondering, be sure to check down there or check in the top pinned comment. I'll put it in either place. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So things that you'll need for this tutorial, I've got a bag of braiding hair here. This is by Expression Hair, and this is a pre-stretched hair, which basically just means that the ends taper down towards the bottom, so it's not super blunt. I'll show you what I mean about that in just a moment. It's not necessary for you to get this type of hair, but it is great for beginners because it makes the job quite a bit easier. You don't absolutely have to have this one, but I love this. This is a thread rack, but I'm going to be using it as a braiding rack, and you'll see exactly how I'll be using that in just a moment. For some extra grip, especially if you're trying to get your braids to look incredibly neat and smooth, I'm going to be using a little bit of Shine and Jam. Uh, you can get this from Amazon. Uh, it's also available at most beauty supplies, so I'll go ahead and link that down below as well. Of course, I'll be needing a rat tail comb. I'm going to be using a metal tail comb because it gives me more precise parting, but you can use whatever rat tail comb you like. And last but not least, I'm going to be using some butterfly clips as well as duck bill clips like these here. I do like silicone wristbands for this because it's an easy place to store it and these are easily sanitizable. So if you're working on clients, you can change these out. They're pretty cheap. And honestly, with that, you can just change out with each client so that way you don't have to worry about spreading germs from one person to the next. Let's dive into this. Okay, so next to me is the braiding rack or slash thread rack that I was telling you guys about earlier. And of course I have the hair taken out of the package already. Now I'm using a lighter color with this one than the mannequin has just so that way my visual learners can kind of keep along and you can easily see where the hair is being added in because if it's done correctly, you typically can't tell on a general basis. The pre-stretch factor of it, see how it tapers down here on the bottom instead of just coming to a blunt edge like this? That's just gonna make blending a lot easier when we're done. And the fiber of this hair is Kanikalon. Now, I like Kanikalon because it responds to heat pretty well. You can roll it and dip it when you're finished and that way you're able to get a curly end on it. You can get it straight and sealed. You can do a number of different things and I've addressed that in a couple of other videos as well, so be sure to check those out. Now we're going to start off by separating this hair and I'm going to go ahead and pinch off sections. Now the size of the sections of hair are going to be based upon how thick you want your braids to be at the end. So I'm going to do this of a pretty substantial size. Um, I like to twist it if you're unaware of like how thick it is and then pinch and that way you can kind of get a grasp for how much hair you're adding. So I'm going to go ahead and do that all across this rack here and just make sure you're using a consistent amount of hair each time. Okay, so I can tell you guys now, I don't typically recommend this hair just because there's not a ton of hair in the bag. And you guys can see, literally separating that out, it just filled two rows. Typically, one bag will take you at least three rows with the size sections that I have. So just be very aware of the amount of hair that's in the bag. But I'm not going to be doing a full head. I'm just showing you for these purposes of teaching you in the video. Once we've got all of that taken care of, I'm just going to go ahead and part out a section of hair here. And you guys will kind of see exactly what I'm doing here in just a moment. If you're not aware of how to properly part these out, I would suggest that you check out my how to cornrow video. While this is how to do feed in braids for beginners, if you don't yet know how to cornrow, I would not recommend trying to braid with hair added or trying to do feed in braids because you kind of have to have the basics down before you hop into the more advanced stuff. And this is a more advanced style of braiding. All right, so you guys can kind of plainly see here the section I've parted out. I don't do straight back braids. I always like to have at least a little bit of a slant to them. Um, but you guys can see it's kind of coming down here, slanting, and then it narrows out at the end of the nape. There's usually less hair or less hair available in the nape of the neck. So you want to make sure your partings back there are pretty thin. And honestly, that's probably still a little thick, but we're going to work with what we've got. What I'm going to do first is take some of the Shine and Jam, and we're just going to go ahead and place that on the hair that we're braiding here. Now, a lot of times you'll see people place this on the back of their hand like so. And you see people use varying amounts of this just depending on their style of braiding. Um, you'll probably see me dip in for a little bit more towards the ends, but I don't want to use so much to where this hair is looking crazy and it's just loaded up with tons of product either. So find whatever balance works best for you and then we'll go from there. But once I've got that done, I want to ensure we keep any flyaways out of the way just with our duckbill pins like this here. And I'm going to do that primarily in the nape as well as in the fringe area at the front. This just ensures that any flyaways that could potentially get in the way are not going to be able to get in the way at all. What I'm gonna do from here is take some of the hair that we separated out earlier, and let me move that out the way. We're gonna take some of this hair we separated out earlier, and I'm gonna split it into three. And I'm just gonna trail that up my arm. Now I'm only gonna do this for the first piece that I'm adding in, and that's because I really want this to start off a lot more subtle and kind of work its way up from there. So I've got all three pieces here and then I'm just gonna go ahead and pull her right on back over so you guys can see. Alright so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start out by picking up a very small section of hair like so. I'm gonna split that into three 
and we're going to begin braiding without any hair added. Now you can start with hair added if you like, but I just kind of like the knotless look that it gives when you got it without any hair added and then you gradually add in. So once I get my braid kind of set in place, I've got some structure, I can see this piece here is going to be the next one to go under the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of the hair that I've got on my arm. From there, I'm just going to add it into those outside strands, bring my middle strand up, and it's going to go right on into the rest of that braiding pattern. So you guys can see it looks just like that there. Now this is why we separated out that first piece into multiple pieces. You can do it into three or four depending on how you want to add in. We're going to do it again to that next piece there and just go ahead and continue to add in and braid. Now you can honestly do this as frequently as you like based on the size that you want your braids, but I'm going to do it pretty much every step of the way because I want you guys to see how much of a difference this can make. Um, if you wanted to see something more subtle, I would recommend you check out my first feed in braid tutorial because it has uh, more of a subtle look to it. This is more of like a Ghana corn row that I'm doing here, just based off the amount of hair that we have in. And I'm always adding it in when I'm bringing this strand under, uh, just because it's honestly easier for me, this outside right strand. Um, from there, I'm gonna add in a bit more. And you guys can see, once my braid naturally thickens up, now I'm out of the pieces that are on my arm. So from there, if I want, I can go ahead and start picking up hair off of the rack and be able to continue on in there. So now I've got hair off of the rack and these are much larger pieces. So you'll begin to notice those braids will go from more of a gradual progression to more of a noticeable progression. So what I wanna do is make sure I've twisted that a little bit so the hair's underneath. Pick up a little bit of hair as I continue to braid. Okay. And just continue on with that process. Now I'm gonna add into this outside strand here so what we want to do is pick up another piece of hair, I'm going to add it in, just like so. I'm going to give it a very light twist, and then from there, just go ahead and continue that braiding process. And literally, you would go through this all the way through until that braid gets to a thickness that you like. Now, the nice thing about doing braids like this is that you can really, for people who are self-conscious and don't want their scalp to show, feed-in braids are great because it helps out with disguising any type of thinness. It also helps to ensure you're going from thin to thick where your braids can literally touch and hide uh, the scalp underneath there because some clients just don't like to see scalp and it gives a very different style of braids altogether. And you guys can see how even though that dark color is in there, it doesn't look abrupt or like, chow, what is going on over here? So I'm going to go ahead and continue that process there right on through. Just like so. And this is honestly getting to a thickness that I'm beginning to kind of like it at, so I don't think I'm gonna be adding a ton more here. From there, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue the braiding process. And if I feel like, hey, it's getting a little too empty or spacey in here, I can go ahead and add in later. So as I'm braiding, I'm kind of feeling those strands between my fingers, and I feel like this strand here needs a bit more added to it. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to go ahead and pick up another piece and I'm going to add it in on that side now. So from there just going ahead and add it right on in there just like that and this way I can add to the thickness on that side just like you guys are seeing there. Now I'm going to continue that braid right on down. All the way until we get to the bottom of the hair. So you guys can kind of see how that hair, if I'm adding in hair up here, notice how because there's more hair uh, that's being added in, we're seeing more of the blonde down here, we're getting more of the natural hair. So the more of the hair that you add in, if you're trying to switch colors, the easier it is to do that. There are tucking tutorials and techniques, but I don't know, uh, I don't show how to do that on this channel, uh, not yet anyway. So feel free to look for a tutorial on how to tuck hair if you'd like to know more detail on that. And basically that's just where you're hiding the natural hair color. Once we get down to the bottom, I can then kind of feel and see, okay, which of these strands is feeling thin, if any. Um, I feel like these outside two strands I have now are slightly thin, so I'm gonna add just one more piece on there. Give it a light twist and continue to braid. Now let me zoom you guys out some. Don't mind my mess on the floor, y'all. From there, I'm just gonna continue braiding, and this is where I would begin to add in a bit more product. So. We're just going to add in a little bit more on the ends of the natural hair. 
And now, of course, if you're working with someone with curly, kinky, or coily hair, starting out on blown out hair is the way to go. And I'm just going to continue right on with these pieces that uh, I'm placing in here. I'm just going to go ahead and place a bit of product on the ends of that natural hair there, like you guys are seeing. We would just braid that right on out. Notice how it tapers down and you don't really have to worry about that hair trying to stick out or not blending because the mixture of the product and the fact that you've got so much of the artificial hair added in, it just gives a very neat look uh, to it overall. Now once I get down here you guys can see certain strands are longer than others so I'm just going to take a little bit from a neighboring strand. I'm going to add it in and when I say a little bit I mean a very small amount. I'm just going to add it into that one and continue to braid right on down the shaft of that hair. And I'm going to feel for thickness as I go down. So if any of them are feeling a little thinner, I can kind of steal and add little increments here and there. And that way it allows me to balance it out without it looking wonky or the braid looking kind of uneven, off kilter, or things like that. Now notice how this hair is naturally tapering down like your natural hair would. And yeah, that's basically it. Now I always have someone ask me at the end of the video what you can do to seal off the ends of these braids. So if you wanted to, you could do a rubber band on the end of here. Um, I don't typically recommend it, but you can. You can also get uh, some boiling hot water and dip the ends of the braids in that. And what that helps to do is to seal the ends of the braids. Or you can roll the ends of these braids and dip it in hot water for a curly look. Um, a lot of times in the salon, I actually just take a blow dryer to it and I pull it and blow dry and the heat from the blow dryer helps to seal as well. But you guys can see here, this is the look that we have here. It starts off from very thin with just the natural hair, gradually adding in. You guys can see how it gets so much more bulk uh, all the way down. No hair is sticking out and we just gradually taper down. Now if you would like to know uh, more about this, feel free to check out my other feed-in braid tutorial, although this one has quite a bit of information. Um, of course, as always, let me know what you guys think down in the description box below. And until next time, take care, God bless, and stay glam. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell notification so you can be notified every time we post instructional tutorials like this. You know I love you, boo. Bye. If you don't yet follow us on Instagram at GetGlamFam, be sure to check us out. We have tons of stuff that you just may love, including comedy, foolery, and behind-the-scenes stuff on videos like the one you saw today. Be sure to check us out and follow. Take care, God bless, and stay glam. You know I love you, boo.